the announcements. All right, as you know, I've embarked on this crazy project, 100 videos in 100 days, so this would be video number six or seven, something like that. I'll know when I, when I put it all together. Also, I've gotten a lot of emails about bridge fees and stuff. I deleted those email addresses, email lists and everything. So, I've got a bridge fee, bam, under there. And also, if you want to be down on the email list, because this is saying, hey, I want information from you, it's there. That's the only place it's going to happen. And once again, uh, subscribe from the blogs, because everything I do is going to go through that list. It's not going to be all this stuff. You're not going to get all these duplicate emails. It's just going to be one email from me about whatever, whatever from that list. And you can't even sign up for the blogs if you haven't signed up. And I may just go ahead and delete everybody. And that way when the blog post drops or whatever drops, you'll just get it one time versus several times. And also for the people who didn't want to be there, hey, God bless you and you have a wonderful life. All right. Now, t now to the video. Hey, this is Glenn with Making Money with Storage Unit Auctions. The title of this video, How to Protect Yourself from eBay and Craigslist Customers. Let's get into it. I've had a lot of experience with this. First of all, I'll tell you what prompted this video. Some information recently just ran across my desk and it brought back some memories of an event that happened to me in my early eBay years. And one of the things that a lot of people don't know, now for those of you who already know this, stop, stop pulling your hair out and losing your mind because just like you know, there's 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 100 people who don't know. Uh, one of the things about eBay is that if you conduct a transaction with someone, they have access to your personal information, i.e. your phone number and address. Sometimes when you do the transaction email, all that stuff's just like bam right there in the email. Or they can request it if they've done a transaction with you. I was selling this beautiful sofa set on eBay. And understand, don't be afraid to sell large items on eBay. People will travel for a deal. I've had people come from New York, Texas, and California and Ohio for stuff. Florida, but mostly the East Coast. So don't even be worried or pretty head about that. And I had this guy and he bought it within two days and we kind of kept going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And somehow a disconnect occurred because Early one Saturday morning, I opened my door and it's him. He's like, hey, yeah, I've come to get the sofa set. And my eyes are like, you know, what the hell? You know, because what are you doing in my door? And he's like, oh, I thought, you know, because we emailed back and forth and I thought it was cool and I have cash. Fortunately, the sofa set was in my garage. So I'm like, you know, he's here, he's got cash, he bought it. What am I going to do? Like, hey, you go leave, you go home and come back to it. No, you know, so I went ahead and got dressed. Went out and helped him load up the sofa. And as a sweetener to the deal, he bought the coffee table set, which was also in the garage, that matched the sofa set. So additionally, I got an additional 200 bucks. But the rest of the day, I was weirded out. I was like, what the hell is this? What, what is this? And then I went ahead and did some research, and I found out how he got the information. That day, I went to the UPS, well, it's, it was, used to be called Mailboxes, etc., but it's now the UPS store. And I signed up for one of those boxes. I also called up one of my credit card companies, changed the billing address from that credit card to the mailbox, etc. box, and I had already had like a remote call forwarding number, which would ring my eBay, you know, well, which would ring my um, cell phone. So I already had that, but the address thing was just weird, you know, it was just like wow. So I put all that stuff into play. I highly suggest you get a Google, you know, Google Voice. It's free, and the utility of the device. Is freaking amazing because I believe you need to have layers of separation between your business and your personal life just because there's some people who are crazy you know in my case the guy was really nice I actually made more money but let's be real that's not always going to be the case so go ahead and do that if you haven't done it just to protect yourself uh, like I said the Google voice number will cost you nothing it's a hundred percent free and you can link it to your cell phone and when you don't want to conduct business you go to the dashboard it doesn't ring your cell phone to your home phone you wake up in the morning you turn it on and it's pretty much your servant okay also on eBay there's a lot of people that use what I call feedback extortion like oh I'm gonna do this and some are really good and they word it a certain way if you get in a situation where a person's like filed a PayPal dispute with you, go in the dashboard and escalate that dispute immediately before they do. 
Because what this does is forces them to send it back to you. And it's already set up and they're in the position where they have to send it back to you or they're going to close out the dispute and just keep it and leave you negative feedback. I had several cases like that where I escalated. and Because the thing is, if they go ahead and do it, then you're ass out. And they can actually keep your item and get the money back. Yes, that's happened to me. And I was like, well, that's what we just went ahead. Because the thing is, typically, you're going to get a neg anyway. It's going to happen. So all of this dancing and twisting, you know, if you are really negative, feedback adverse, you know, just go ahead and give them their money back and let them keep it and bend you over. Hey, that's what you want to run your business. It's your business. I didn't do that because a lot of times these things were super expensive and I actually got them back and resold them for more. So that's one of the deals about the business. But that's just a little tip how to protect yourself from some eBay customers and some stuff because as you get on eBay, you know, sometimes I wish I can give you tips on how to protect yourself from eBay, but you know, that's a whole nother world. Now, moving on to Craigslist, same thing. Get yourself a Google Voice number for your Craigslist calls because anytime anyone calls you from that number, you know it's about money and that's, a, that's like a yay moment. And also, let's talk about selling items. Uh, I've thought about this and I've thought about this. If you're going to truly be in this business, and understand for many, many years, I had many strangers come to my house, but I'm 6'1", and you know between various time periods was anywhere from 250 to 300 and some pounds it was a different group and I will say this to the ladies I'm amazed at how many five foot nothing women allowed me into their homes for Craigslist buys because you know in my book I talk about you know pimping Craigslist there's ways that you can buy stuff and actually resell it on Craigslist because a lot of people don't know how to present or sell their items and I don't know how many women I mean middle of the day here I am Ding dong, let me in the house and they're home alone. I was like freaking shocked, but it happens. I don't know, maybe it's my personality, whatever. But so many times that happened. And every now and then I would get something like, hey, you know, I need to wait till my husband gets home. And I'm like, cool, you know, it's your life, personal safety. I totally get it. But that's just crazy. But, you know, going forward, 2012, if you're going to do this as a business and if you treat it as a business versus a hobby, you're going to make business money. Just a thought. Rent a storage unit to sell your stuff out of, and that way you're not bringing people to your home. Is it an additional expense? Yes, but is that you know what is the worth of your personal sanctity, your family? Because all right, something bad could happen at the storage unit. You should take someone with you, you know, typically, and not your wife, <laughs> unless you know she's gangster with it. You know, there's some women out there that are gangster with it. Um, just you know, add these layers of safety to it because I've never been robbed. I've never been threatened, I've never felt funny, but I've put certain methodologies and certain tactics into play. Like number one, I've sold a lot of electronics, a lot of electronics. At one point there was probably $20,000, $25,000 worth of electronics in my basement, which someone can move in a large car or a van or SUV. Another reason for people to not know where you live. Also, when you're selling an item and you've got other stuff, you bring out that one item. You don't like let them in and they look at all this other stuff. You bring out that one item because one of my techniques was to bring stuff out and have a table set up in the garage and they will only see that one item. They wouldn't know what the hell I had. They wouldn't know how, what my house looked like on the inside. And once again, never got robbed, never got threatened, never had any problems. Also, if you're going to sell an electronic like a cell phone, a laptop, something portable, something that needs Wi-Fi, go to Starbucks or any coffee shop that has a lot of people there. I like Starbucks because every time I go to Starbucks, there's always a bunch of people there. I got this from my gold guy, the guy that I sold my gold to. We used to meet at Jason's Deli and conduct anywhere transactions from anywhere from $500 up to $6,000 cash on the table. He's got a scale out, he's got his asset. We're doing, I can, and it's just, number one, if you're gonna do your business like that in public, that brings a lot of comfort and confidence to the other person because you know, it's not shady. You're not trying to do it in the alley. And at first, I was kind of like, we're, you know, we're doing all this. We got the gold and stuff on the table. And the thing is, really, nobody pays you any attention. You know, people are doing their things. You know, you're just sitting there acting natural. Really, no one, I was amazed because we would have like, you know, t you know, and he probably had 10, 20 grand on it. Nothing ever happened. So conduct those type of businesses on the inside, not in the parking lot, maybe on the patio. Because the thing is, it, it just, 
really cuts down on bad things happening to you because they've got to come on the inside there's cameras taking pictures of them there, there's a lot of things that are going on that are in your benefit by doing the transaction that way also let's talk about taking credit cards you have square you have go to into it you could have your own merchant account on your phone if you're going to take a credit card from someone from a Craigslist transaction they need to know beforehand that you have that capability because you whip it out on my, at the last minute sometimes people get a little weird because they, they're like what are you trying to pull you know put it in your ad I can accept PayPal I can accept credit cards on my phone just let them know and that actually may get you a faster sale because there are some people who don't have the cash but they can run their credit card also when you take that credit card payment you have them sign something and with uh, you know with uh, Square you can take their picture look at their ID <laughs> okay I've done this it's like sure may I see your ID because this is your money anything funky goes on you lost your item you're gonna lose the charge back I'm just letting you know but if you take their picture and you've got their valid ID once again I've never had a charge back from a Craigslist transaction by just asking for their ID because I had a few times where the guy was like oh I don't have my ID I don't have my ID it's like you have cash because I can't take your credit card with well, he's okay well he went to the ATM got the cash and came back because let me tell you I've not had a lot of chargebacks because typically you know you just do a few things you know look at the credit card look at, look at the driver's license look at the signature most people who are not trying to pull anything will have no problem doing this and going forward you know if you you know if you get current across someone like me who uses I love to use my credit card because I get points the more where I use it the more points I get it so I try to use it for everything you got a lot of point masters out there like that but just some simple stuff that you can use to protect yourself in this space because with the proliferation of the TV shows the reseller space is just going to go boom 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 because it was kind of like a little college industry you're going to see a lot of fantastic and wonderful things happening in that space so as you learn these techniques and do this stuff now it's just going to make you a better business person in the future. Alright, this is Glendon with Making Money with Storage Unit Auctions.